The title of this lecture is Challenges for Quality Assurance in Western Balkan Region. Uh, 20 years ago they told us that it will become Switzerland, but now they are talking more like being Western Balkan Region. Uh, the other things, uh, I came on across online learning uh, in already in 1971 in England. Uh, my fourth run education was done by television uh, lecture at the uh, university. Then the third point, I'm not any kind of quality master, uh, being director of Slovenian Quality Assurance Agency. Uh, I don't have any magic stick and we show this is quality, this is not quality. Uh, I must say that quality lies with the institution itself, with the staff of the institution and the students and also infrastructure. Uh, and the last point to start, uh, our country is very heavily regulated on some points, but on the others it's quite uh, free. Uh, this is my uh, Twitter account. Uh, I must say that uh, I advertise Twitter because you can get uh, certain information very, very uh, quickly. Uh, I've been university professor for 42 years. Now I'm director. Uh, uh, I am also a freelance journalist uh, working on television. At present, I am vice president of CINQA and member of European uh, Consortium of Accreditation. Uh, what I'm doing now, I'm following all the time the quality cycle. You probably know everything about PDCA cycle. Anything you want to do, first plan, then do it. And the most important part of that is checking, monitoring, and if it doesn't do right, then uh, uh, take plan B to the react somehow, you know, I, I would say that this our bankers should do, but they didn't. Uh, I'm in quality assurance for a long time, but mainly I'm doing evaluation of the university across uh, Europe. And I must say that the purpose of evaluation altogether uh, is not to prove something that is doing these things right or not, but mainly is to improve them, to tell them how they will uh, improve the things. Last, I returned from Macedonia the other day. Uh, our higher education area, uh, just to tell you, uh, we have nearly uh, 100,000 students in tertiary education. Uh, we have five universities, 42 high education institutions, uh, 43 higher vocational uh, colleges. Uh, but we have a rather large number of study programs and only 3,500 uh, university teachers. If you calculate, you know, the, the time spent for one study program and the number of the teachers, you will see that something wrong with that. But, you know, I am uh, an institution has to obey the rules, the law, and we are doing what we can do. We have the number of accredited study programs uh, is too large for the country. Neither to say that also uh, some institutions should merge, uh, which is a common practice in uh, Europe now. Even I tell you in Denmark, they haven't had any problem with higher education they merge the institution. Also in Finland, they merge institution. The university in, in Germany merged, Duisburg and Essen. Also in uh, United Kingdom, Manchester University and UMIST also merged for some or the other reason. Slovenia is got, uh, Slovenian Quality Assurance Ag Agency got European accreditation. We are on the register of ACAR uh, with some other European uh, states. 
And uh, just now we are waiting the decision of the board of INQA uh, to be a member of European Association for Quality Assurance uh, Agency. Uh, what does it mean? It does mean that the agency is doing under the uh, third or second and third part of European standards and uh, guidelines. Uh, the, now, the cost of uh, universities in EUA. This is uh, the blue uh, countries is where the edu higher education is free. Also, Germany uh, now recently uh, education is free. Uh, and you see Scandinavian countries, Scotland, uh, then some of our countries, and uh, uh, this is free education. And uh, you must say free education for students. Otherwise, uh, you know, you must invest in education. And, you know, in the time of crisis, uh, I always remember the words of the Finnish Prime Minister, they lost all the markets to Soviet Union at this stage, and she said just plainly, education, education, and education. And they invested in uh, education at that time. Uh, why agency in Slovenia? Uh, Slovenian Quality Assurance Agency had some problems with establishment. You know, in 2004, it was put into the higher education law. Then the next minister uh, said, we don't need education, and it happens. So eventually, in 2010, the agency was established. Uh, we got a kind of financing, and uh, we followed the European standards and guidelines with our uh, criteria. Uh, it operates uh, now with the full independence, except financial. You know, we are independent from various stakeholders, from government, from various politics and political uh, parties. Uh, continuously monitor the quality in higher education institution. You know, whenever we have the instrument of uh, extraordinary external evaluation. If somebody of stakeholders complains, then the council agency decides what will be the action. And at that time, the, uh, you know, the group of experts goes to this particular institution. Uh, you know, agencies, as I said, working under the European standards and uh, guidelines, but we created also our own procedures and criteria for external evaluation and accreditation. Uh, now, we also passed two international external evaluation as an agency. Why is this so? Because I must tell you that in the United States, they don't have only fake diplomas, they have also fake university, and also they have fake quality assurance agency. So in this case, you know, uh, also the work of our chain, uh, agency is checked by international uh, group of uh, experts. And this check was done twice by ECAR a group of uh, experts and also now by ENCA group of experts. And you can uh, read uh, these reports on our uh, website. The, the, we have some difficulties, but we are on the right uh, track. Agency activities, uh, uh, as I said, they are written on the website. Uh, performance of the agency is evaluated by ENCA and ECAR. We have a problem with a large number of study programs. This year we should evaluate 250 study programs. It means we should create a group of experts. They should go, because this is mainly reaccreditation, they should go to the institution, they should check to all the uh, all the points by 
ESG standards part one. And, you know, it depends uh, now on quality. Are we able to do this this year? Probably there will be some problem with uh, time. Uh, this is our mission and vision, and this is the structure of the agency. Uh, I'm director of the agency, but I'm, as I told you, uh, I'm like corporal in the army. On one side, a council of agency who is making all the decision. On the other side, I have workers. And in a way, I'm now in position of a kind of uh, manager. We have also appeal committee. So all the decision made by the council can be uh, uh, can have appeal from three levels. So uh, whenever the Council of Agents making a decision, you know, the institution can uh, appeal to that. Uh, and, you know, this is now prolonging the whole procedure. We trained 154 uh, experts. They are in our register and they have continuous training and, uh, you know, after five years, uh, you know, this, uh, the, the number, I don't know, probably will be larger. On the agency are 22 uh, employees. Uh, now, let's go to the subject we are talking today. Uh, I am uh, an older teacher, so I usually rely on the history. You know, without computer, they, this wouldn't be possible. So the start of computers started by Vivian Klum in the 18th, 19th century. Then first mechanical machine for computing was also uh, in the uh, 19th century. But I think this Babbage machine uh, worked now, but it hasn't worked in those old days. Now, the first electronic computer was uh, at the University of Manchester in 1948. Then the technology changed, so we have diode, transistor, silicon chip, and memory media uh, was from punched paper tape. Institute Josef Stefan got this code on his uh, logo, uh, ending to the uh, CD. Uh, first calculator, you know, was in 1970. CCD detector was in 1975. Uh, Sinclair Spectrum personal computer was in 1980. Uh, then personal computer in 1985. Uh, then internet started with ARPANET and TCP IP uh, global. Uh, you know, in uh, towards the end of the uh, uh, 20th century, mobile telephony in uh, also at the same stage. Television was in 1926, and color television about in 1970. All this technology helped that we have now uh, open courses, e-learning, distant learning. Uh, also, I would say about the optical. Uh, cables, you know, uh, for large countries, also for a small country, this optical network is also very uh, important. Uh, now came Bologna concept in, uh, you know, because of massification of study. And now uh, the, the point is that uh, we don't have uh, any more uh, teachers-centered uh, teaching or something like that, but everything is oriented now to students. University should be research-oriented and also service to society. Uh, I just like to tell that analogy we had in old, uh, uh, now people are saying, socialist or communist time. When I, I, I became a professor or a teacher, I had to fulfill pedagogical skills, research skills, and also I had to be a member of some political uh, party, also uh, be uh, helping the society. And, you know, this is exactly more or less the same points that this was uh, 
some 40 years ago. And, you know, students said that learning incorporates distance and e-learning into a category uh, in United Kingdom, they call it flexible and distributed learning, FDL uh, learning. Uh, flexible and distributed learning, uh, this is taken from the policy and guidelines of Quality Assurance Agency of uh, United Kingdom. Teaching and learning and assessment is such that do not require a student's place of study to be physically located within the institution. Do not assume that the student's program or study is necessarily delivered directly by the awarding institution. Do not assume that the student is necessarily directly supported by staff of the awarding institution. Do not assume that the student is routinely working with other students. Do not necessarily require assessment of students' achievements uh, to take place in the location of the awarding institution. I must say that quality assurance agencies in the United Kingdom have all this regulation, by my opinion, you know, strictly written, and they are also following them. And in all time of Quality Assurance uh, Agency of United Kingdom, they haven't had any, any serious complaint about the decision of Quality Assurance Agency, which is not the case in Slovenia. In Slovenia, this is a common practice. Uh, there is only one university which goes through the court procedure in United Kingdom, to my knowledge. This was Southampton. Uh, university. Uh, flexible and distributed learning may include programs which include considerable elements of distant learning. Uh, this means learning from home or self-study and may include learning that uses digital materials and, and communication with tutors by email. Uh, this means e-learning. So they distinguish distant learning and e-learning. And, you know, uh, FDL includes courses that they may deliver directly by the university or wholly or partly through other collaborators. You know, this also is a place for MOOCs. Through face-to-face -face teaching supervision or through digital materials and communication largely alone with a group of learners at home, you know, these are a mode of, of uh, learning. Uh, this was all taken uh, from the QAA policy and guidelines. Now about situation in Slovenia. Uh, we have regulation on many, many things. And, uh, you know, for the court usually it's most important that all these things should be contained into, into directly into the law on higher education. So under the change of the law, I am much in favor that uh, we, we should have law on agency or law on evaluation and accreditation and separate law on tertiary education, like is the case in the, uh, Austria, for example. And in Slovenia, FDL is neither regulated in our criteria of evaluation and accreditation. But, uh, uh, however, Slovenian Quality Assurance Agency, we have internal instruction for our experts for external evaluation. Uh, so these are contained on three pages in our manual for experts. The manual and experts in English you can find of this web, web page and this also, all this uh, PowerPoint will be available to you uh, in a special chapter, which is assessment of distance learning. Uh, our experts should pay special attention to the following. And there are many, many questions uh, which are uh, asked at the institution Usually, uh, this kind of learning is uh, in connection with the 
classic way of teaching and learning, but in some cases it's also the separate uh, courses. For example, our higher education teachers and college uh, lecturers qualify for such a way of work. Uh, are the activity of students prescribes in advance, you know, the, the, the student should know about this kind of uh, learning at the institution. Uh, then about the material, who is preparing that? Uh, and uh, is, is this course is constantly monitored, assessed and evaluated? Uh, if the institution is following the ESG standard, this means European standards and guidelines, it has to check yearly the study programs, also the content of it, the changes in it. And, uh, you know, the institution itself has to assess the materials for students' uh, learning. You know, it's not the point that the agencies should che check this uh, regularly. We are doing this once after five or seven uh, years. There are all the other, uh, all the other questions. The main problem which we came across and also the journalists came across was the system of knowledge testing and assessing along the prevention of frauds is of great importance. So uh, also there is a problem of plagiarism in uh, also present in uh, Slovenia. Uh, then how is the identity of a student who takes a distant examination and should and who verifies it and so on. Uh, there are many of questions you can, uh, I will not read it to you, you can have a look at the website and see it, what the experts must be take care of. Uh, by the way, e-learning is quite common in Slovenian education area. Uh, they're using it, as I said before, uh, you know, as a complement to the, uh, to the uh, classic, classical way of study. Uh, and the most important thing is also that this is only possible if you have uh, IT communication in place, you know, and uh, uh, this kind of learning is also important for a very, very large countries. For example, I saw it in Kazakhstan, you know, Kazakhstan is the size of Europe. I mean, and, uh, you know, to, to get on these long distances, this is one way of uh, providing uh, study. Uh, there are some other uh, uh, questions also. It's a question uh, being on the computer, you don't know that you are uh, checked very regularly. And uh, do the students know how many times they are checked, you know, uh, because uh, the professor can know at what time the, the, the students access the computer and the special study program. Uh, all of us really don't know that if we provide our data on the Google or somewhere else that this is used in, uh, uh, you don't know how many uh, ways. Uh, I must say at the end that distant learning is not specifically regulated in Slovenia. We have very vaguely written in the Article 6 of Higher Education Act uh, which is to do with the autonomy of the institution. Institution can use uh, this uh, kind of uh, study learning in his uh, uh, study programs. Uh, and it's re really relatively common in higher educational education. I must say when I was professor at Ljubljana University, uh, I use MIT Open Courseware uh, for my students as an addition to the ordinary uh, study. Also, in the laboratory practice, I, I use CCD uh, cameras on the, uh, you know, to just to 
uh, take the, the video of the experiments. And the students at the end were very uh, glad to get all their experiments on the CD. You know, uh, this, but this was not written in any study program, neither was checked. I might have a problem at Ljubljana University that some, some people from the Academy of Television and Art would uh, tell me, are you, are you, do you have a license to take a, a video or a film of the students properly? You know, uh, I should have a special education for that. This is not uh, regulated by Higher Education Act and also it's not included uh, uh, in criteria. So I think that uh, this kind of thing should be uh, regulated in, in, uh, uh, in a way. Uh, this is also one of our, uh, uh, our goals for the future. Uh, and at the end, uh, I must say that uh, all these things about the quality you know, they said quality assurance agency is responsible for quality. Really, we are responsible to act when something is going wrong. But I always rely on the quotation by Henry Ford. It says, the quality is doing right when nobody is looking. But so far, uh, th this nobody uh, can be in some cases quality assurance uh, uh, agency. And uh, I advertise Twitter, uh, not because my children wanted me to be on Twitter. I'm a very old person, you know, by your standards. But you can get very recent information directly from the Twitter. And the last one is on February 12th this year. And it says Harvard MIT suit over lack of uh, closed captioning online. Uh, as, as you will see, uh, uh, society of deaf students complained. They were discriminating using this kind of uh, material for education because they were not subtitled or they didn't have the, you know, the language of, for the deaf people. And sometimes, you know, with this massification of study, we really don't take care very much for the students with uh, disabilities and uh, handicaps. And, you know, this is one, uh, uh, one complaint which appeared on the, uh, on the website. Uh, you know, our agency is young, you know. I am director now for two years. I got some experience <coughs> from the work of agencies now uh, in Europe, and uh, I don't know if I will be able to uh, answer uh, uh, your questions, but our experts are so well trained that it's not n for me necessary to answer all this uh, question. If you have any question relating to quality, you can use our email info, then it's nakvis.si, and you know, then we are, uh, we are processing these questions, and usually you get the answer in, in a day uh, or two. You know, I will finish with that, uh, and uh, you know, I should think that uh, there is a place for agency in Slovenia because you know, some of our politicians are thinking that, uh, you know, foreign language uh, agency can do the same work, but uh, it's not the case. You know, being an independent state, uh, we should have agency as it is and uh, also properly financed. The whole budget of the agency for 22 persons paying for all the, uh, for all the accreditation procedure is one million, one million and uh, 200 uh, euros per year. Now working for three years like that. As you know, one of the, our bankers who, uh, who resigned got one million uh, as a fee for uh, 
for be a successful uh, banker. I mean, and also Nobel Prize is also one million euros. So it's uh, you know those relations uh, are not uh, uh, properly to say. I would say with this budget, our professor Mramor gave us. We need only the the honorary of our ex former minister and will survive for the next year. So uh, 700,000 euros. It's, uh, uh, but you know, for this year we are okay. Uh, sustainable financing of the, uh, of the agency at, at stake. And each year we have to fight for this money, uh, which is really unnecessary, you know. It's, uh, uh, but uh, this is more like not a question or a comment for you, but more or less a political question. I would like to thank you for uh, your attention. I, I have to leave a bit early because I have an appointment with dentist, and this was done four months in advance. So it's uh, uh, anyway, you can reach me on, on Twitter and also on email. Uh, at the end, I will just say why I use Twitter. Because when Minister was Giga Turk, he didn't answer neither ordinary mail, neither email, but he was very active on Twitter, so he still is. I mean, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.